Welcome back everyone. During yesterday's video, we talked about the current situation between Russell Westbrook and the Lakers, and with all of that in mind, where do they go from here? I think we would all love to simply say trade him, but it does not appear to be that easy, because unfortunately for them, there is no team that currently wants him. Despite their best efforts, they have not been able to improve his trade value, and according to The Athletic, the current asking price to take on his contract is nothing less than a future first round draft pick, which in my opinion is completely ridiculous. But then again, we know how the NBA hates trading with the Lakers, and at this point, no one is willing to help them out, even if it might benefit them by doing so. Where does that leave the Lakers though? Should they overpay to get rid of him? Or is there potentially a more beneficial option that we are not thinking of? We will talk about exactly that in today's video. And to begin, I think we need to rule out the option of him returning. That has been a topic of debate for a while now, but it no longer appears to be a real option. If the report from Javon Buha of The Athletic can be believed, then Westbrook and the Lakers are heading towards a quote-unquote inevitable divorce. And following the parting between Russ and his now former agent, it's widely believed that he will now become even harder for the Lakers to deal with. In fact, his agent might have been the only one encouraging him to rejoin the Lakers, as he made it very clear in his statement to ESPN that he felt it was the best plan for Russ moving forward, which was not likely a viewpoint that they shared and that was almost certainly a reason for why they parted ways. Unfortunately for Russ though, the Lakers' ability to trade him just became a whole lot more difficult. They did not have much leverage to begin with, but now with these reports coming out, it might be even harder to trade him than before. It's not like he had much value to begin with either, but with both the Lakers and Russ appeared to have been committed to continuing their partnership, that was something they could use to have leverage in trade talks. After all, they do not want to seem desperate, and it took months of their own propaganda to begin changing that narrative. With all of these reports coming out though, they are very likely back to square one, as none of them are painting Westbrook or really his trade value in a positive light. Many fans are joining the quote unquote, F the picks narrative in regard to a Kyrie Irving trade, but in reality, that deal no longer appears to be on the table, and it might not even been an option to begin with. The Brooklyn Nets are not trading Kyrie Irving without trading Kevin Durant first. That hurts their leverage in any trade involving Durant, as they could no longer claim the option of running it back. And I don't think many fans understand the draft pick narrative to begin with either. It's not that the Lakers want those draft picks to keep, as that has never really been their ideology either. They are hesitant to trade both picks not because they want to eventually use them, but from the fact that those are their only tradable draft picks for quite a while now. It's not about them having no draft picks. In fact, they own three first round picks within the next four years. The only problem is, they can't trade any of them until after they make them. Which again, is why their 2027 and 2029 first round picks are so valuable to them. They do not have much young talent. So for now, those draft picks are their only way of making a big trade happen. And if they were to use both of them right now, they will not be able to get themselves out of a difficult situation in the future, which is very likely to happen with LeBron getting older and potentially even leaving them after this year. All of that needs to be kept in mind when trading Westbrook. There is no denying that they should and likely would give up a first round pick for a good player in return for him, but as of right now, there is no deal like that one on the table. Again, Kyrie Irving is not currently available, and while I love the idea of trading for Mike Conley, Bojan Bogdanovic, and Patrick Beverly if Utah moves on from Donovan Mitchell, that won't be an option until after a Donovan Mitchell trade happens. The only option that might be available right now is a salary dump to San Antonio. They were rumored to be interested in taking on Westbrook in a three-team trade involving Kyrie Irving, and they might be interested even without Brooklyn being involved. The Spurs have entered a full rebuild, and with that in mind, they might be willing to take on an expiring contract to fill up their cap room. After all, they don't really need it anymore anyways. 
they were saving it in case of an opportunity to get DeAndre Ayton, but with that no longer being an option, they will now have to fill it somewhere else. With no one left on the market being worth giving it to though, they will need to fill it through a trade, and there is no larger, readily available expiring contract than the one that belongs to Russell Westbrook. Would the Lakers be willing to do that though? A trade with the Spurs would likely involve Doug McDermott and Josh Richardson, neither of which are game-changing players. Along with that, they would definitely have to give up a first-round draft pick here, and while it would likely only have to be one, that might not be something they are willing to do. I mean, at this point, I would think about doing that if I were them, but it would by no means make them top-tier contenders again. I believe it would improve their team, although probably not enough to make it to the NBA Finals. That might be their only remaining option though. Hoping for Kyrie Irving appears to be wishful thinking, and while a potential trade with Utah is more likely, that is not a guarantee either. In regard to making a for sure trade, a deal with San Antonio appears to be their most likely option, who as we know, have been notorious for not negotiating well with them. Other than that though, what might be the alternative? No, not the idea of having Westbrook play for them again, but rather, doing the same thing that the Rockets did with John Wall. Or in other words, keeping him but not playing him, that would theoretically solve the problem of having to give up draft compensation to get rid of him, and according to some, would even outright improve their team too. Another alternative would be stretching and waiving his contract, which would be an additional solution to get rid of him without giving up a draft pick. However, neither of those are great options, and according to reports, they already shot down the idea of El Rey waiving him a few months back. In my opinion though, even keeping him but not playing him is a bad option. They are not in the same situation compared to the Rockets with John Wall, because unlike them, they are actually trying to win games, and while you can argue that sitting Westbrook might make them marginally better, it would not make a huge difference. The only way for them to improve is by trading him, that is the one way they can become significantly better as a team, and there is really no way around it. And with that in mind, I believe they need to buy their time here. Things may not be looking good right now, but there is a long way to go until training camp. They cannot afford to become impatient. They may have had a setback in regard to Westbrook hurting his own value, but there could very well be more and better opportunities for them down the road. One of them might be the San Antonio trade, although that would have to be my last resort option, as I would much rather wait for a trade involving Donovan Mitchell or maybe even Kevin Durant to happen. Because after that, guys like Mike Conley, Bojan Bogdanovic, Patrick Beverly, and maybe even Kyrie Irving would become available. No, it may not be fun to be patient, but I think it's the best option they currently have. With all of that being said though, what do you guys think? What do you believe the Lakers need to do next? And how do you think the Westbrook drama affects that? Let me know your thoughts by commenting down below and we can talk about it there. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.